Uh, we really communicated to the commission because we wrote a letter to them telling them that uh, our leader has been denied access to and uh, the commission tried its so, I can say it's best so that we can get access to him. But uh, at the end of the day, when it, the commission decided to continue with its sittings, it stated that it will continue even if we did not appear. And uh, since our demands were not met, we have already told them we decided not to appear. Are you not going to be bound by the decisions of that committee? Because if it's public knowledge, the governor, if the government says we're going to implement this, what would you then do? Um, we will not stop them from implementing any of the recommendations, but our lawyers are studying the report, and uh, if there is any room for us to take any legal action against the report, we'll definitely take that direction. What precisely in the report do you say is biased about it? Because some people will say that the army was indicted here. Mm -hmm. uh, it was criticized for using excessive force mm -hmm. against, you know, innocent members of your group. Yes. Um, uh, what exactly is biased about that? Um, in, the, in the statements of the report, it says that our leader should be personally held responsible mm -hmm. for the acts of commission or omission of the members of the Islamic movement. We find this highly biased, highly unjust. How can he be held responsible for the action of millions of people? In fact, that day, he was at his home. And what happened? There was no any interval for him to even intervene. And they even claim in the report that the governor called the our sheikh, mm -hmm. telling him to intervene. How can you accept this claim without hearing, asking the sheikh whether he, he was called and what he said to the governor? So we don't agree with this particular indictment that he should be held responsible. Our leader is innocent and had he been given ample opportunity, this will not have happened because there was time when even our sheikh decided not to go on with preaching to us if there is any security lapse anticipated. Well, part of what was said, Ryan, if you can hear me, is that they said that your leader refused to call the members to order when required. And then they also stated that it wasn't, about, it wasn't the first time that this has happened. It's almost like on a regular basis that it happens. No, it's not on a regular basis. What happened, we have been in the, that Husseiniya Center for the past five years, and there is no any record that we have prevented people from passing through that busy highway. We have never ever uh, molested anybody whenever we have our own program. We have one of the largest gatherings here in northern Nigeria, the Arba in Trek. Nobody is being molested. Nobody is being prevented from being his own, going about his own business. And to claim that they called our sheikh, I will vehemently deny this because we know that at that time, what happened, the, 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 what happened was between 2 o'clock and 4 o'clock p.m. that Saturday. And within that time, nobody contacted our sheikh. And I believe, even if the sheikh was asked, this is what he will tell, he will say. Ibrahim, do you consider your group a law-abiding group? Of course, we are law-abiding, in the sense that uh, nobody can say that here is what we have been doing that is unlawful. Even the processions we are doing are peaceful protests. Nobody is being attacked. Nobody is being abused. We are just saying our own grievances. And this is in accordance with the Constitution that gives every citizen of Nigeria the right to protest. So what are we doing that is unlawful? We pay our taxes. We, 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 we hold international passports. We have national ID cards. We have everything. But we are in all facets of life. There are doctors, teachers, and other professions among us. So how can we be labeled as... So is it, uh, is it possible we that the government or we don't respect the law? It's not like that. Is it possible that are you then saying that those that came out to testify at the commissions of inquiry were biased and um, did not like your sect because some of the things that were alleged were exactly that your I can group even call out some names. There is a group called JTI, JTI Jamaat Tajdid Al Islam. They were once together with us, but they broke away simply because they accused the leader of being a Shia in Islamic case, and they said that they are Sunnah. So how can we get fair, uh, fairness from this kind of people? And there are this JTI, 
this um, JNI also, that is also the Izala, the Salafist, they are, they are all known to be against Shia and the Islamic movement in particular. So whatever they said was incorrect and uh, they were out just to paint us black in the eyes of the public. But, but one would think that you if to you... redeem some of the you know thinkings of of people because the some of the things that have come out and, and looking at this incident very regrettable very unfortunate mm -hmm. considering the amount of lives that were lost yes. uh, you know how do we begin to even look at the causes of that without without somebody taking responsibility from your group I think they should actually the first step is for them to release the sheikh. If they release the sheikh, then he can tell the world what actually transpired, or if at all another independent judicial commission will be set up. We would like that one because this is what we demanded earlier on. But you said he wasn't there, that he wasn't even able to intervene. How can he then be the only one that can tell the of story? Of course, because he was attacked in his house. Men, most of the people who were killed were killed in the vicinity of his house. So he, he, he what I'm talking he about is the first day. I mean, because you in the report, the governor was commended for having called the sheikh. Mm -hmm. You say that you know the sheikh was not even around. Yes. The government, the, the the sheikh did not even have any time to intervene in that uh, particular matter. And you doubt yes. very strongly that yes, exactly. there was any call put through to the sheikh. Yes. Were you with the sheikh? I was not with the sheikh. How do you know that there was no call put through to him? The reason why I know that there is no contact with the sheikh because there are some survivors of the incident and uh, the, we had several interviews with most of them and they didn't tell us anything like that. So we, we, we have to believe what they said. And uh, to be very frank, had it been the governor contacted the sheikh, you know, when Jonathan's regime killed three children of the sheikh, the governor, El Rufai, before he became governor, he went and condoled the sheikh. So they are in good terms. In fact, we never expected this to happen because we believe at least El Rafa is somebody who knew the movement. He knew the leader. Had it been he is all what they are projecting, he is uh, arrogant. He so you, you do think that the sheikh would have come in to save the day uh, on that particular day before you know, the, the follow-up incident happened? You think that if the sheikh had intervened, the situation would have been different? Exactly. But he, didn't, he couldn't intervene because we believe it is a premeditated plan to wipe out the movement completely. If at all, the sheikh is to be arrested, is that how to arrest somebody? I was a witness when the Abacha Junta decided to arrest Sheikh Zegzeki. When they came, they came battle ready, but they came with a search warrant mm -hmm. and an arrest warrant. Mr. Brahim, I'm going to ask you to hold your thoughts for us. We'll be back in a moment and okay. we'll continue this conversation. Do join us again.